Welcome to this exciting episode of Talking Beards, the podcast. Tonight, our super great guest is Marty Pippen from Gather Up Events. His group is putting on a beard competition called the Smoky Mountain Beard and Stash Fest, which is going to be held in Gatlinburg, Tennessee on June 12th. And this event is going to be benefiting the American Eagle Foundation. So if you want some more information, make sure you go over to TalkingBeards.com to find out all the information about this great event. But we also discuss some fun things with uh, Beard Mail. We got some really cool stuff from a company called Fresh Beards, FreshBeards.com. Um, and we talked about some events that are going to be coming up. But uh, yeah, we got some really awesome awesome stuff in the mail this week so make sure you watch this or you can't really watch this podcast but you can listen to it but you can watch the video version of it over at talkingbeards.com so go over there to watch that but we want you to go subscribe to the podcast over there as well but you can listen to this podcast right now welcome to the talking beards podcast an entertainment news show all about the world of facial hair. You can catch the show live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern by going to TalkingBeards.com. While you're at the website, you can check out all the other cool things that we do. We cover the latest news going on in the beard and mustache world from competitions, contests, fundraisers, and all the charity work. We also have special guests each week talking about what they're doing to make a difference in the facial hair world. We also do trivia each week with really great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. So make sure you tune in every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. at TalkingBeards.com. Now let's get on with the show. What is going on, everybody, in Talking Beards world? We tried something different with the intro this week, Scott. We did, and Nico decided that he was going to do something different, too. He decided he was going to play with his squeaky toy. Hey, he loves squeaky toys. Andrew Matz is right. No whispers, just straight to business. That's right. We're yeah. all about business nowadays. All about, all about the business, Andrew Matz. And we, we can't, you know, we can't waste a minute just going on and on. We got a big show tonight, so we yeah. need to get started. So tonight, this is episode number 119 of the live show, episode number 194 of the podcast. We are rolling closer and closer to that elusive number 200 of the formerly known as the Beardcaster podcast. And, you know, maybe we're going to do a hot Beardcaster-esque Talking Beards podcast. That's kind of the idea so we'll see how that goes so tonight uh we have marty pippen from uh the gather up events that is going to be putting on the smoky mountain beard and mustache fest coming up was it june 12th crap i forgot to write down the date june 12th uh, hey i nailed it uh yeah so that's going to be in gallenberg tennessee and uh everybody should go because it's going to be really exciting uh yeah so everything else we have tonight we have uh share uh, we have interview. We're going to have some Natalie news. We're going to have some comp news, beard mail. It's going to be an exciting night. So let's just get this started. I'm Aaron D. Johnston. I am uh, over here. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and all that good stuff at Aaron D. Johnston. Go ahead, Scott. And I am Scott Zakora. You can find me over on Facebook, Instagram, but uh, we want you to go over to TalkingBeards.com. There you can get more information about the show. You can pick up some really cool merchandise from us. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast. You can also check out old episodes of the show if you ch if you choose. Hello, John. We have lots of people in here tonight. Dan B's here. Eric Choate's here. Look at he's like action packed, action -packed. packed episode for Mr. Eric Choate. Oh my gosh, Megan Reynolds here. Ryan. Oh my gosh. Two sister. weeks in a row. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. Will what Will Inman? Why does this name ring a bell? There's something Speaking that's of Will Inman. Congratulations, Will Inman. You won last week's uh share, and you will be getting an honest Amish slash talking beards package in the mail coming up soon. So it's already sitting right over there. It's ready to go. So we're we're, you know, it might sit over there in the package and ready to go for a while, but it's gonna, it's coming to you. It's, it's ready. So we're, we're trying new stuff and, you know, 
we're going to try to get packages out on a timely manner. That's that's a that's the new thing. What's up, Scott Turner? Uh oh, look at this, Facebook, Facebook user. user. Wow, what's up, Facebook user? Okay, everyone, we got everyone's checking in tonight. This is really good. We like so. This. Uh, what do? Oh, Scott's here. Look at look at Scott's here. You're here. No, I mean not me. Oh. Scott Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. Wow. He's a he's like a private eye or something like that. Yes. Okay. So uh yeah, so tonight this episode is gonna be we're gonna we're gonna start it out kind of serious and we're gonna just try to get going. But uh oh no big big sad thing in the uh beard world news. Uh we, we lost a friend of ours and you know a lot of people in the beard community. Uh Mr. Uh, Evan Bowden passed away this last weekend, and uh, fortunately for everybody that you uh, you get to watch his his antics for uh, last Saturday. He he did a show with with uh, Sean Glander. They were super good buddies, and he co-hosted the the result show with with Sean Saturday night. So, I mean, he he got to he got to you know host a show with his buddy. And and I know that that meant a lot to Sean to be able to go back and look at those memories and stuff. But you know it freaking sucks. It, it, to everything I understand, it was it was kind of unexpected and you know drunk grandpa. We we I, I was I was had the honor of meeting him a, a couple of times at Mob Fest stuff, and he he was a freaking super nice nice dude and. He he'll definitely be missed. So we're gonna dedicate this episode to him. So we'll we'll try to do a good one for him. Yeah. So, but uh, let's let's. Well, we're gonna we're gonna pick up the the, uh, the level here now and not be so uh, down. We want to, you know, it's it's all about getting everyone, uh, everyone's spirits up and uh, you know, doing fun things and uh, spreading joy and love in the beard community. That's what we try to do. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll try to, you know keep it positive here and do, do what we can do. And that's, you know, that's what drunk grandpa would want us to do is keep powering through it. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So Scott, what have you been up to today? Uh, well, today was a really, really, it was like 80 and like beautiful and sunny, but, uh, now allergies are really kicking in like nobody's business. It is You've like been sneezing your head off before the show. I wonder if oh. you can get through an entire hour without doing it. I will, but my no, it's like literally, it was like it, it, my body knew that we were getting ready to go live, and it was like my nose just all of a sudden just wanted to get really stuffed, and then it wanted to start running, and then it wanted me to sneeze, and then did you go eye, and catch it? I did. I did. I saw you. You were like you ran into the hallway I, earlier. I ran. I ran so far. I ran so ran far. So away. far away. I did. You oh did. my gosh, Brenda! Brenda's here. Everyone. Oh my God, it's Brenda. That's what you sound like to me. Shut up. You don't even have to clamp your nose. That's what you already sound like. What's up, Carrie? Bow and arrow. I don't have to talk tonight if I if you want to be that way. No, I, I like I like your new new talking. I got my tea. I'm ready for that. So I'm hopefully that's gonna help loosen me up a little bit and relax me for this this really great show that we're having tonight, which I'm very excited about our guest. Yeah. Marty He's Marty. Marty McFly, Marty. Scotty Pippen. Does That's he? I, we should ask them if it's like, should we call him Martin or Marty? I mean, do we know him well enough to call him Marty? I don't know. We'll just we'll just refer to him as Martin the whole time and just see what happens. Okay, how about that? That's so, uh, yeah, I didn't really do a lot today. I didn't I, uh, ask. What are you? All of a sudden, you're just gonna tell me what you did today? It's, well, I mean, you know, I, I asked just, you, so that's kind of how this works. Then you're supposed to ask me. So I'm maybe just I wasn't. It. Maybe I wasn't done. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What Aaron, else did you do what, today? Aaron, tell me about your day. Oh boy. Well, uh, I I got home early this morning. I took a nap for about two hours. I got up, took Natalie to the doctor, and then I uh, came back home, went to sleep for a couple hours. Then I got up, I blew the driveway okay. off, and then I got my Corvette outside and made sure the tires are aired up because I got to drive it to work tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. And. uh yeah, so hopefully my oil pan gets fixed in my company truck finally, so it stops leaking a quart of oil a week. So I get to drive it tonight. So that'll be pretty fun. I haven't driven it to work in like a year. So that's, Corey, that's what I'm doing tonight. Corey, unfortunately, no. I don't have enough time to do that. Come on, Scoot. 
We were just actually we were just looking at flights too. Yeah, and Scott waited too long, and now he's yeah, there. No, anyway. Oh gosh, Steve's sister is here. Debbie. What's up, Steve's sister? So is that it? Is, are we? Are you done asking me questions? Rudy, look at Rudy <laughs> Joseph Franco, James' dad. Can you believe James that? Franco's dad's here? Wow, can wow. you believe that? That's Woo! Amazing. So this is the point in the episode, Scott Sakura, um, where we kindly ask everyone to share this episode. Oh. And when you share this episode, if you are that magical person who shares it the most amount of times, guess what? I'm going to send you an honest Amish prize of some sort. A new and car? Yeah, if Honest Amish, you know, sells new cars on their website, I may send you one. So just oh check their God. website and see if the new cars are on there yet. Cause you know, I could probably send you one if it's on there. But yeah, share this episode. Look at you, Eric Choate. <laughs> look at him. He's like, ah, ah, look at me. So Get yeah. Sure. That's it. So yeah, share this episode, everybody. And you could win. And you people could. like winning stuff. Whoa, what is this? I don't know. Jackie Thurston. Oh, my gosh. Thurston Howell. Yeah. James Wilson. Oh, my gosh. He's, Rudy's just sharing, the, sharing people. He's just yeah. tagging away people. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Oh, way to go, Rudy. Way to go, Rudy. That was my grandfather's name, Rudy. Rudy? Was it Rudy Joseph Franco? R- Rudolph. Rudolph Sakura. Oh, here's some breaking news. Did you know that Cher is 74 years old? Thank you, Vaughn Hall. Is today her birthday? Probably. I don't know. Antonio. Antonio. Uh, Antonio. (laughs) All right, Scott Score. All right. So we have an event that's going to be coming up. Tell us a little bit about this event, Aaron. The Smoky Mountain. I know we already kind of briefly touched upon it. I thought you were going to bring it up. Um, So, yeah. So this... June 12th, we're going to have the Smoky Mountain Beard and Stash Fest in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, The uh, charity is going to be the American Eagle Foundation, and the title sponsor is Honest Amish. They're uh, pretty much the best company, I think. I don't know. But yeah, they're going to be involved. And with that being said, I'm going to be vending for the first time ever, all by myself. So I'll probably have Andrew Mattson to help me. But I'll I'll be there. So Why don't yeah, you answer this question real quick. Can you guys tell me what's the actual difference between regular bomb and the heavy duty bomb? So uh, the regular bomb is really really soft. It's kind of buttery. It's not technically a butter, but it's a really soft bomb. And the heavy duty bomb has some grit to it, and it has a little bit more beeswax for a holding quality. So it's just a little bit thicker, and like I said, it's a, it's a little gritty. But it's it it all breaks down if you solidify it in your hands. But it's just got a little bit more beeswax for a uh, holding quality. So that's the difference between the heavy duty and the regular beard balm. Oh my gosh! I know. Jim Jones is here. Jim Jones is here. Wow, wow. that's amazing. Look at that. All right. Okay, so okay, go ahead. We're gonna show you this really sweet video. That's all about the event coming up. Go ahead. That is amazing. That I love it. So yeah, so let's just get get this thing started live from the Gatlinburg, Tennessee, probably adjacent area. It is Mr. Martin Pippen. Um, 
I gather up yeah. events. Did you just hit puberty? Marty? <laughs> I don't know. So we didn't know if we, we should call you Marty. You know, we didn't know if it was like, you know, we, we were close enough friends to be able to call you Marty. So we, we decided that we're going to call you Martin because this is a very professional and, uh, you know, podcast or whatever. <laughs> I'll take it as long as you call me something. We'll we'll it. call you some. Do you? I'm just going to start with the question that everybody's wondering: Was Scottie Pippen your favorite player growing up? <laughs> you know his name was spelled wrong, so I counted off a point or two there. But he was B. still he he was up there. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was actually of of all this. Like everyone loved Michael Jordan. Scottie Pippen was my favorite. Like I loved Scottie Pippen. He was my guy. Yeah, uh, I, for about 20 years there, I always got asked if I was related. Are and you? Saw, and then they saw me jump, and they and so you're not because you can't jump very good. Absolutely, <laughs> <sighs> that makes sense. So, uh, Marty, I mean Martin Pippen, uh, you're from Gather Up Events, and you all are putting on probably one of the, uh, I don't know, you're you're definitely shooting for the moon for this live beer competition for your inaugural event. So, how how on earth did you get? You know, you're not a beer beard company or a a beard club or anything you just decided you know what we're going to put on a beard competition how on earth did that come about well you know we actually started out with the idea of just doing a beard festival right and we were going to do some competitions as a part of it and then as we got into the process we found out how important the competitions were to everybody so it became a lot more about the competition but we're not taking away that fest side right and 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 the to us what makes it a little bit different is that we're trying to make it inclusive we're trying to get people that you know haven't spent years on their beards uh to come in and and see what it's all about you know maybe have a beer or two watch some competitions you know buy some things from the vendor expert and and get get exposed to it so um now the the genesis of it the genesis of it was you know just one of our think tank sessions where we're sitting around going you know what do we want to do different this year? You know, what is there out there that, that we think would be a lot of fun for people that maybe just isn't getting, you know, treated well enough in this area. Right. And, and I know there's some little competitions around there and not, not to, you know, talk badly about him because, you know, I'm, as you can tell, I can't compete in any kind of beard competition. Oh, no, uh, you could definitely compete in beard competitions. Like you, you've got the, the under four category you <laughs> being it. So right. somebody's got to lose every event, right? There you go. <laughs> there, there I am. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we just, we just wanted to kind of take it up and, and do what we do. With, which is He's what we meant to come, find ways to have fun, you know, and, right. and make it fun. So do you, so. do you think um, one of your, um, your famous Bigfoot conventions, do you think that was like an inspiration for to lead into the beard world you know um you know it, it probably gave us some courage to do it right <laughs> because, because a lot of people have talked about how like y'all basically put on the best bigfoot convention on on earth probably the universe probably you know we, we haven't checked everywhere yet but we feel like we do we definitely try uh and, and that, that's one thing anyone that comes out to this event will find out that if uh if they don't have enough fun, it's not because we didn't try because we're, we're going to do everything we can to make it a great event for people. Um, you know, we, we, we know we, we can't make everybody happy all the time, but we're definitely going to give it a shot. And now, you, go ahead, Scott. Now, now, as we were talking to you earlier before, uh, before we're interviewing you now, um, you were really kind of breaking down like all the really neat things that you guys are going to be having, uh, at your live event, you know, with the venue and stuff like that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about like your, your setup for this event. So people oh, sure. can kind of get an idea because usually what we're used to is maybe like a small concert venue with the stage and then some people standing in front of the stage, the end there's, there's the event. What, and what, that is not what you're doing. Yeah. That is not what you're doing. So no. yeah. So tell yeah. us a little bit about so, your so, yeah, so we're going to be in the uh, Tennessee Ballroom at the Gatlinburg Convention Center. Uh, that's a, a venue that will hold 2,000 people. We're not setting it up for 2,000 people. But we are doing uh, some interesting things with it. We're, 
We're running a uh, about a 20 foot catwalk right off the front of the stage. So the uh, contestants will come up. They will, you know, walk up to Adams, who's the, the MC of the event. Uh, he's going to do the introductions, uh, and then they're going to basically do a catwalk. They're going to they're going to walk those beards and mustaches down the stage and uh, come back around. While they're going through there, we're planning on having live cameras on them so that uh, people that aren't really up close can still sit back, maybe at a pub t- in the back of the room, and still take in the uh, the majesty of their beards. Uh, they'll then, of course, roll out just like they would with any other competition to the judges table where they can get their inspection done by our elite crack team of judges. Um, and then they'll roll them out. Right. There's a, a handful of surprises that we hopefully uh, we'll be able to pull off in the middle of all this. But uh, but we're, we're hoping to keep it lively. And, and the other thing we're doing, and I don't know if this is very common or not, but between every set or grouping of of, of competitions uh there'll be live music so we're, we're going to have probably 30 minute sets of live music every hour or so to to give everybody a chance to take a breath take a take a drink and relax and then uh and, you know, enjoy the music and maybe spend a few minutes uh you know buying some stuff from aaron over in the vendor booths uh <laughs> buy stuff from aaron yeah, um do it lots but uh yeah we're we're, we're gonna and, and again we're we're starting early i know um when we did our research, most of the bearding competitions usually started, you know, in the evening, six, seven o'clock. And, you know, the, one of the first things I was told as I was doing my outreach to professional bearders was like, oh, these things always run late. Don't expect to get done on time. And I was like, well, we're starting at noon. And they're like, oh, well, maybe you'll get done on time because <laughs> it is a seven hour event, you know, start to finish. So, um, you know, the uh, well, we'll probably start out the day with, you know, like the kids competitions and maybe one or two of the just for fun. And we are excited about some of the just for fun categories too. We haven't had anybody sign up yet for the body beards, but we are uh, hoping we're hoping to get some of that action going before it's over with. Well, I know a a couple of people in the beer community that's pretty much head to toe, pretty, pretty hairy. And I know, I know my wife's kind of jokingly talked about it. Uh, One of the guys that I think is going to come down for, we're going to try to talk him into doing a, a body beard. So, Hopefully we can talk him into that and, and you'll definitely maybe have some people involved in it. So uh, with the body beard, w- what exactly is that? <laughs> the, just where a person was willing to shave their very hairy body in a way to simulate some extension of their beard. Um, nice. And, uh, you know, uh, Nikki had actually found some some good photos. I think she posted them on Facebook. But I remember back when I was in school, this guy that I never knew was a a hairy, hairy, hairy animal. He always, he always wore uh, like a little bit of a goatee. And then he came in one day and his goatee and his mustache came down and went straight down around his chest and did like three loops around his, his nipples. And, and then he was shaved everywhere else, but his whole body was it looked like, just looked like his mustache just came down and circled around. I don't know, that's, it was, that's weird. Cause that's usually how Scott shaves his chest. Just like naturally. hair around. Just like that's what he does on just a normal basis. He always Shut sends me in. pictures every morning. I'm like, why do you do this every day? He was like, it makes me feel pretty. I'm like, okay, Scott. So I don't know. Uh, some people actually like doing it. So um, Brian Mitchell asks, when is this event? So it is June 12th at noon in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So, now, I don't know if you've caught all this too, because everyone is continuing in the chat room to name everybody's talking about the, the, the Bulls. Chicago Bulls, <laughs> 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 naming all these different players on the Bulls. So, it's I mean, there's there's not even a discussion. Everybody knows that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player that's ever lived, and he had an amazing support team around him. And without him involved in the Bulls, you probably wouldn't even know who most of those people were, except for Dennis Rodman, obviously. But I mean. I'm just putting that out there. Everybody knows that. All right. So I'm going to bring up the, uh, on, on the screen right now, we have the uh, entry form uh, where you can go over to the website and uh, sign up to be part of the event. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, some of the categories that you guys are going to have. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading your thing. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we tried to cover and we had more to start with. And then with consultations with the judges, they're like, oh, that's going to be too many. Right. So so we consolidated down some. So we we have the uh, three different lengths of full natural. Uh, then we have full groomed of any length, partial natural. Of course, I'm just reading off this list. Uh, but what we are doing is if someone doesn't see what they want on their on the list. Right. 
uh, if they can get three people interested in, in doing it, we're adding the competition, right? So except, musketeer, except for whalers. Yeah, no whalers are allowed at this event. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> but yeah, so we we didn't have musketeer up here two weeks ago, and then um, George Anderson. I don't know if you know him. He uh, said, oh, I've yeah. got I've got friends that are I can get three. So now musketeer he, he is less. a huge. Uh, what's the right word? Proponent. Is that the right word for uh, musketeers? So we've we've battled with him, and he's he's a huge friend of ours. And and I always said that, um, but musketeer is basically like a baby goatee. How do you he didn't know like how that? Big he is. <laughs> so the musketeers, I'm, they're I know some big mustache dudes that are growing out their musketeer, and I think that's going to be an amazing category. I'm I'm really 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 looking forward to that because I mean those dudes are super cool, and and I think it's it's a very kind of a different category and i think more people should do a musketeer and i think it, it's kind of taken on a life of its own and i think i think that's going to be the hot new thing probably at least for the next year or so we're, we're going to have a bunch more musketeers i'm looking forward to that i'm glad you added it yeah well and like i said we're open to any of them and we had probably three or four more uh we were just warned that uh you may only get one person then you're doing a whole competition for one guy right so so yeah so we're, we're open to adding more we're just wanting to make sure we you know, have a reasonable number of people kind of show up for each category so that it can actually feel like a competition. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you have know. five different uh, mustache categories. Then you have uh, four different whiskerina categories, which always is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're just for fun categories, like you were saying, what the uh, body beard, uh, kids category, longest beard, sexiest beard, summer Santa. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So expect some uh, speedos and, uh, black boots and see what happens right dang you you could have just not had eric been a a judge so uh then he could have been out there in a speed of well you know the way we're doing it is any of the judges uh can dismiss themselves from their own category so they can compete so oh my god so so yeah so you know and and, and help me out here Nat- natalie natalie it's just natalie with I, yeah. I, every time i say it i always want to say natalie Dude, everybody, I know that's hey, not right. every, everybody dolls it up everywhere we go. She gets Natalie and N- Natalie and Natalie and I don't, I, I, it's just Natalie. She just yeah, so, you know, spells it the correct way with no E. Everyone yeah. else spells it wrong and puts an E on there. That was my grandma's name. She spelled her name wrong. She yeah, we just figured in. that it, with these guys, you know, being kind enough to participate as judges and, and working with us, we definitely didn't want to take them out of the fun for their own category. So, and the, the other judges promises to treat them fairly as, as them. So, so um, um, we, we already handed at one of them. Do you have the list of the judges that you'd like to tell everybody? Oh, absolutely. So of course, Natalie Johnston, um, we have, and we've mentioned Eric Schmidt Monson, who uh, is a fantastic Santa. My, uh, you know, well, Nikki actually, has a tendency of every time she sees him, she just gets giddy because he does look so much like Santa. He crazy. is the most realistic Santa I've ever seen. It's crazy. Yeah. I went to Denver with him in 2016, and we after the competition, we were downtown just eating. And, dude, you would be amazed with the amount of people, grown adults coming to the table and just talking to him like he was, was Santa. This right. girl, she was full adult, broke down crying. To come over and meet him. <laughs> wow. It, wow. And it was just like he was just in normal clothes, but everyone like people were like, hey, Santa, and just straight talking to him like he was Santa. It was wild. Well, so sorry. And his, well, his natural laugh is almost a ho ho ho. You know, it's like when he I when is I, Santa Claus. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And uh, when because he, he only lives maybe an hour half or so from where I live. So he was one of the first people that I actually, you know, reached out to because he was local and uh, met up with him, had lunch with him. And uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of amazing. And Nikki was like, get us. And that's a selfie I sent you that ended up on the uh, intro. Uh, yeah. She goes, you got to get a picture of you as Santa. And then she accused me of dressing in Christmas color just because she knew I knew I was going to be meeting Santa. <laughs> and maybe I did subconsciously. I don't know. But, but yeah, so then we got uh, Carla Grigg uh, Scheiber who's coming in from Virginia. Uh, we have uh, Taxi Phil Jones uh, coming in from Cincinnati. And last but definitely not least, uh, oh, uh, Owen Hicks. Man, I'm about to call him Jake Owens. I'm like, wow, that's a movie star. Owen Hicks. Uh, <laughs> Owen Hicks. 
which is amazing. And I don't know if you guys have any pictures of him, but after seeing the picture that we used for him in his promo on Facebook, I realized he is almost a dead ringer for the logo that we drew for this convention. If he, if he took those curls down and straightened them out, hair color oh, and everything. He that's is, pretty he funny. Is almost a ringer. So maybe in the future, I'll talk him into doing that one time and being the official uh, live version of this. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure he would have no problems doing that. <clears throat> oh, Andrew Glander's here. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I just, I'm super excited about it. I know it's the inaugural event. You never know how it's going to go, um, but I hope this thing just goes as well as I think it should because I'm excited for it to, you know, come back and grow and and be bigger and better each year. Uh, Gatlinburg is amazing. Anybody that is watching or listening to this, you should go to it just for the simple fact to just get a beard show and then get to enjoy Gatlinburg because this is one of the best, best town cities, I think in at least this part of the country for sure. Now you guys are, now you, you guys are doing this as a charity event too, to raise money for an organization. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you guys are going to be working for? Yeah, so uh, a portion of the proceeds of this thing is going to go to the American Eagle Foundation. And if you've ever been to Gatlinburg and made it down to Dollywood or um, even went on their website and checked out their webcams, the, the American Eagle Foundation has been around for about 30 years. And they are exclusively about protecting uh, the, the bald eagles as well as other um, you know birds of prey, right? But uh, if you ever walk through Dollywood, you'll see that that huge nesting area, kind of on the far on the back side of Dollywood, where they set up and have you know dozens of bald eagles uh, living there. Um, they are a great group of people, and, and we're excited to be working with them. How did you guys end up getting hooked up with them? Like, how how did that all happen? You know, we, we keep a short list of, of people that we think might be, you know, good members or good participants as, as, as um, you know, partners and charities in, in events like this. And, and they've kind of been on that short list for a while. And uh, when we had our original sponsors or our original, our original charity fall through, uh, we just reached out to them and said, hey, would you like to be a part of this? And they're like, oh, we would love to be a part of it. And they're actually bringing a live eagle going to be at the, uh, at the event. So... We're excited about that little splash of character for the event as well. I don't know how many that is cool. or events have live eagles at them, but uh, we're excited about that. So, um, yeah, and they were they were happy to be there, and we were happy to happy to help. So there'll be a handful of things trying to raise money for them that day, as well as getting a percentage of the proceeds um, when when it's all said and done. That's awesome. I, I think that's super cool that you're going to have an eagle at a beard competition. No one else is doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of people in the chat room. We got Dan. He says he's going for sure. For sure. Let's see. Uh, Corey says that he needs their PayPal's. I I assume he's talking about the judges. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> bribes. Yeah, no, I, I, judges oh, don't do bribes. He, he needs I'll, to bribe everybody. All, all bribes go through me, and then I disperse evenly amongst the judges. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. Pass it along. One question I have from a personal standpoint: When sure. from the vendors' tables, are you you still going to be able to see the stage? Um, if you want to see the stage, you'll see the stage because we got a special place for sponsors. There, mm -hmm. There's a section in the inside where the sponsors can set up, or where the presenting sponsor especially can set up. Um, the rest of them will be either in the hallway, outside, and we actually have an entire second room. So depending on how many. Vendors actually end up showing up or any other activities. We may actually take over uh, a second section of the conference uh, of the convention center called the Mills, the Mills Auditorium, which, which is about a 1200 seat place as well. Okay. Um, well I we, call dibs on the one that sees the stage. You got it. It's your, <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing is you'll be located directly between the two beer stands. So, nice. Perfect. That's exactly yeah. where I want to be. Right. Um, can people compete in more than one category? If they've got the facial hair to do so, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. And uh, and I know that we're, we're trying to – we haven't finished the schedule up yet, but we're going to try to do it in a way that it would get people that, say, hypothetically wanted to do a natural competition early but then want to get fully styled later, mm -hmm. uh, give them enough time to do that. That's one of the reasons we're putting the gaps in there as well nice. um, between the competition sets. 
I like that. More it, you know. So, do they have to pay per category? Is that the way y'all are going to do it? Yeah, it's a per per category okay, cool. uh, for the thing, uh, basically to buy trophies. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, do you speaking of trophies? Do you already have them picked out and stuff? What What are y'all going to have as trophies? Or do you know yet? You know, um, Nikki's been working on it, uh, and we've been trying to find as many. And if you guys have pictures of trophies you've gotten in the past, send them to us because we're trying to make sure we do something a little bit different if we can. Okay. Uh, and that's sometimes hard to do with as many trophies as goes flying around out there, but we're definitely going to try to do something different. Eagle trophies. That uh, should be it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Best in show can be a giant eagle. Right. All right. So, so we just get the live eagle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Best in show gets a live eagle. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is great. Um, all right, so I put a link in the chat room if you're interested in getting more information about the event. It's also on the bottom of the screen, which I know it's kind of uh, difficult to like sit there and quickly uh, remember that. So it is in the chat room. Uh, you can also find it in the show notes as well. So if you are interested in going to this event on June 12th in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, that's where you can get your information at or reach out to any of us. Um, we will also hook you up too. So any any parting words, Martin Pippen? No, just trying to make it out. We're going to have fun that day. It's going to be a, a long day, but it's going to be a fun day. So It's going to be an experience. I have one last sure. question. So, oh, yeah, dude, this is going to be an experience. Like, I know for a fact everybody that this event has been pushed and every, and it's going to be a big event and, and everyone needs to go make it even bigger. So it comes back every year. Um for as far as mm -hmm. tickets go, do you have to? Is it only pre sale for, or will you be able to register day of? As uh, well? You'll be able to register day of as well. Uh, if you're trying to get a okay. new category in, I wouldn't wait till that day to do it. You know, uh, right? Yeah. So if you if you want to make your own category, you need to be proactive and get you and your your buddies with you know whatever the the monkey tails and all that. They need to get involved so you can right. have three monkey tail people to have the monkey tail category. Exactly. And then you got to tell me what the monkey tail is so that I know how to. Oh, look it up. <laughs> look it up. It, it, was, it took the internet by storm about six months ago. <laughs> I will check it out. Oh, I yeah. did want to mention this. Uh, you were talking about tickets. Um, while we do expect there to be plenty of general admission, we do not know if there will be many of the VIP seats left. The uh, As I mentioned earlier, there's that catwalk going right off the front of the stage. There is a section of seats all the way around that that will be roped off and they go to the VIP ticket holders. And it's really still not much of an upcharge, but it does give you a guaranteed dedicated seat the whole time you're there. So you don't have to keep fighting to get back to your seat or have someone hold it for you. Uh, and it also comes with T-shirts and uh, anything we can find to throw in a swag bag from our vendors and sponsors. So. Um, well, we'll, you'll definitely have some talking beard stuff in that swag bag. So that that's more incentive. Yeah. Well, no, those are the ones you that need I truly to expect. You get these VIP seats. Yeah, because uh, honestly, so far, we have sold more VIP seats than we have general admission because I think most of the general admission people think they'll probably be fine later getting their tickets later, although there's only 24 days, 15 hours, 22 minutes, and 50 seconds left. Oh, how you good. better get on it. Nice. So that's oh, definitely no. something that's going to be new and exciting about this event, as opposed to most other uh, beer competitions. You you get to buy your seat and actually have a seat because a lot of these events you're just standing up the whole time. So it may be a long day because you're going to have you know bands playing and stuff like that, but you get to sit down, so it'll be fine. Yeah, and you can always walk outside and take in a little bit of the Gatlinburg skyline and the pomp and pageantry that is uh, you know that that world up there. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fun, and, and it's, it's going to be a long day, but I think it's going to be a, a very good day. I'm excited about it. Uh, so I think everybody, like I've said already several times, if you're on the fence to go to this thing, you should go because it's Gatlinburg, and it's amazing. So Martin Pippen, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, guys. Uh, we appreciate, I appreciate you. It. And if there's anything we can do to help out your event, all you have to do is reach out. You know how to get a hold of us. So we appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Take care. Hey, all thank right, you have very a good much, night. Martin. We did it. Mark it was, says, what state? Gatlinburg, Tennessee. That is in the state of Tennessee, Mark. So, uh, yeah, that that was it for Martin Pippen. So, everybody, uh, like I said, check out the, the information in our show notes. You can find it. I think, what is it? Uh, Gat, 
gatherupevents.com slash Smoky Mountain Beard Stash Festival with some dashes in there. So uh, find it and click it and get registered. A lot of pre-sale stuff. You can get some seats. Like, how cool is that? Like, how many beer competitions can you buy seats? So I, I like it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to buy a seat. I'm going to be in a, a folding chair by my vendor table. So anyway, Natalie said keep going. So that was it for the interview section of the show. Now, Scott Sakura, do you want to know what's going on with Natalie? Let's find out what's going on with Natalie. Talking beards, the Natalie update. She's on a train. Um, So, like I said earlier, uh, we went to the doctor today and... For the second time in two days. Yesterday, she went for blood work, and today we went back to get the results for said blood work. Um, her right side is still hurting. Her left kidney was removed, so both of us have been a little bit nervous about why her right side was hurting. Uh, she's had a doctor a couple weeks ago say, your right side's probably going to hurt because you know everything's pulling back to the left because there's a giant hole there now inside your body and stuff like that. And uh, your incision's still healing. Her incision's not really hurting right now, so that's pretty good. Uh, but her right side, we're like, God, what if her right kidney's freaking out and all this stuff? And we were in a little bit of a panic over here. Um, not going to lie. So the doctor today said there was absolutely nothing to panic about. Uh, her blood work, uh, all things considered, looked good. I mean, obviously, she's went you know, to one kidney now, so her creatine level's a little high, but they think once everything kind of settles out, uh, that should come back down to, you know, her normal uh, level. Um, it's not her definitely normal. Not her normal. Definitely not going to be a normal normal, but it, it it's within a range of uh, good. So there, the doctor today said, absolutely do not freak out. Her right kidney's not, you know, about to shit the bed or anything. It's it's good. So, uh, within, within, you know, consideration, it's good. So she's doing, she's doing all right. She's hurting a bunch, but like, like we've been told several times, you had a major organ removed. It's going to hurt. You're not going to bounce right back. So she, she's definitely ready to bounce right back. And it's just, it's not ready. Um, a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, she, she had a good day. And I think maybe she, took that one good day and ran with it. And maybe it, maybe it set her back a day or so. Maybe, I don't know, but she's, she's doing all right. She's, she's still up moving around all that good stuff, but she's, she's definitely still hurting, but she's, she's definitely feeling better than she was three weeks ago. So that's pretty good. But yeah, that is the Natalie D Johnston update from talking beards. Yes. Yes. This is excellent. Everyone likes it, and I'm I'm glad everybody likes it. So yeah, she's you know she's a rock star. Look at that. Andrew Matson says she's a rock star for dealing with all this. She inspires me. So Andrew Matson wants to be Natalie D. Johnston now. So that's that's pretty nice. He needs to shrink about a foot. Um, hey, Aaron, do you know what you know what it is right now? What is it now? Competition news on Talking Beards. Competition the news. Look at all those people. God, look at us. God, I look can't wait for that. That's so. This is this picture I found on my phone today. It was from the 2019 uh, Holy City Beard and Mustache Society Southeastern Beard and Mustache Championships, and I cannot wait for this thing to happen again. I you miss can't. it. So you can't. COVID smashed us for a couple of years, but maybe we'll get going again. Who knows? So yeah. Talking Beards, the competition news. Uh, there's three competitions coming up this weekend. We're not going to venture off uh, too far, but we will touch base with one other one. So three competitions this upcoming weekend. The first one. Talk about it, Scott. What is this? Be Beards of Thrones. It's at the Ooh. Kingdom Cuts Barbershop in, uh, what is that, Esley? Esley, Texas, I, it sounds right. Yeah, so uh, the, if you are available on Saturday, May 22nd at 5 p.m., that's where you're going to have to be at is the Kingdom Cuts Barbershop. Um, other than that, I don't really know any more information on it. Me neither, <laughs> but it's happening. So if you're in, in the Asley, Texas area, this is a competition for you. So coming up also this weekend, uh, we have this one. It will be the Beards, Bikes, and Brews, the Bearded 
Eagle Barbershop. I guess that's going to be the hot new thing. Barbershop's doing competitions. So this one is, oh my gosh, my cursor keeps covering it up. Saturday, May 22nd at 5 p.m. as well. Oh yeah, so this one's in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So yeah, it's coming up this Saturday. So if you are in the Bowling Green, Kentucky, you know, and you're up there going to the Corvette Museum or whatever, and you want to go to a beer competition, this is definitely uh, what. Remember that time the floor caved in at the Corvette Museum and all those it cars did. went to the. Well, it was all like eight years ago. Yeah. So that was what the Fallen Seven. And those cars are still in the museum right now. So the, I think they only restored one of them and the rest of them, they kind of created their own exhibit. I thought they're, they have like a glass floor part where you can mm-hmm. look so they talked about doing that but they actually repaired the floor Stupid. they filled it in and stuff so uh but yeah there's a new exhibit as of eight years ago with with the fallen seven there that was crazy when that happened it was just a sinkhole that opened up underneath the you know the the museum there and all the cars fell in so that sucked <laughs> um but yeah so the last event for this upcoming weekend uh is going to be the Beard of Villains, Mississippi. So this is going to be the DSV5 Dirty South Villains Beard Competition, the Juke Joint in uh, Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Uh, Like I said, it's going to be brought to you by the Bearded Villains of North Mississippi and the Mystic Beard Company. Uh, It is this Saturday. And all I know about this event is our very good friend, Josh Barefoot Brains, is going to be the MC. So that's good. And that's, that's good enough reason for everybody to go just to go like, see Josh. I like this. So, yeah, so that's coming up. And uh, last, but certainly not least, we already talked about, we'll talk about it real quick. The beard and stash fest coming up June 12th in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we just did a whole interview with Martin Pippen and he explained everything about that. So Go check it out. Look at that. Christopher Wilson is headed to Bowling Green this weekend. Christopher, let us know how it goes because I like Bowling Green. Uh, that's, you know, basically where I'm from. And, you know, I'd like to go up there, but I'm not traveling right now. So what else we got going on, Scott Score? What What else? What do you mean? What else? As in this? <gasps> Talking beards. The, the male. male. The male. Yeah, that's what we intro. got. So, uh, all right. So, th- this exciting week, we got some mail. I got some mail. This I never get any real beard mail ever. So, I was pretty excited to be getting some stuff. So, uh, I got uh, we got reached out uh, by a company a few weeks ago uh, called what? What is it called? Fresh Beards. Now, uh, the guy that reached out, his name was Zach, and uh, we corresponded back and forth a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I'll send you some stuff out. So he sent me out a box of some really uh, cool stuff. Um, And hold on right here. Looks like uh, Bowling Green's really going to have the – they're going to have Jim Jones and Taxi Phil. And wow. That's going to be a pretty good pretty good event, so everybody should go to Bowling Green. But go ahead. But, uh, yeah, so – uh. Anyways, uh, we'll pull this up here. Um, yeah, so here we go. This is the website, freshbeards.com. Anyway, so yeah, if you uh, want to go check it out, uh, like I said, freshbeards.com, go over there. They sent me this really cool shirt. Um, let's get that out of there. Yeah, so oh, my gosh. Look at that. Fresh and a beard over there. It's like, look, it's pointing to my beard. Can you it is. That? Look. They knew that your beard was going to be on that side. So that's where they put the arrow. So what all do they send you, Scott Score? All right. So here we go. They sent me this really cool hat. It says fresh beards. French breads. Not French breads. Fresh beards. Oh, sorry. I'm not good at reading. I like that hat. Box of biscuits. All right. Now, this was the one thing that I was like so like excited for. Now, as I tell everyone, beard wash, this stuff is really good. Now, it's not uh, the one thing that I really liked about it is, and, and I was saying this earlier that, you know, aller- the allergy season is right now. 
And uh, one of the things I have to do is because I work outside and I get a lot of pollen in my beard, I got to wash my beard like a lot. And uh, some of these beard washes that I've gotten are like real, like they, they'll strip everything out. And uh, the one nice thing about this one is it doesn't, it, it doesn't leave it like straw feeling when it's done, but it suds up really nice. Um, real mild scent, you know, it's, it really doesn't have a scent at all. So it, it just it gets nice lather and a good rinse out and everything. So, and then when I get out the shower, I used the, they sent me two different oils, the uh, Woodland and Armor, Armor. So they come in these little one ounce bottles, which when I saw them, I was like, oh no, a screw top. I'm like, I'm all about the, the little squeezy thingy, but um, when I did open it though, it did have a little dropper. So I, cool. dude, I did really like that. I liked how it comes out. The smells are, are, uh, real mild. Like I said, they're not like overly, uh, aggressive and using the beard wash with the oil in combination, like really, uh, like everyone knows that I usually don't use like real heavy scented oils because they end up like going kind of sour by the end of the day, but these definitely did not. So, and then he sent me some, uh, beard butter, um, which I did like this stuff. I did like this stuff, but, uh, a little, little thicker than I was anticipating. I, I was more kind of, it almost looks like a, it does look like a butter, but, um, it it's a lot thicker, almost almost balmish. Um, Perfect. That's exactly where it needs to go, right there in that spot. That's what I was thinking. That looked a little dry. Yeah, a little dry. So, but yeah. Um. So they sent me that, and then they sent me a couple really cool stickers. Ooh. Ooh. So. Yeah, so if you guys are uh, interested in uh, checking out Fresh Beards, go to freshbeards.com. So that's all I have for my uh, – that was all I got in my my beard mail for the week. So That's a pretty anyone, good beard mail. Yeah, if anyone uh, wants to send me some beard mail, uh, please reach out to us at talkingbeards1 at gmail.com, and uh, we'll get you the information right there. Talkingbeards1 at gmail.com, and we'll give right. you our uh, mailing addresses so you can send me some beard mail. Or you could just hit us up on, you know, any social media platform. Just, yeah. you know, but, Direct you know, talkingbeards1 at gmail.com, we both get and we both look at it. So, um, yeah, send us, send us, you know, whatever, and we'll talk about it on the show. So if you have a product or, you know, something that you want us to talk about or stickers or a hat or, you know, Whatever. If you have an invention, beard. yeah, we'll talk about it. So that's part of our beard mail segment. So I have three packages to open up tonight. I have cut them all open, um, but I didn't look at anything. So this first one, I know what one of them is, but I think there's multiple things in here from our friend Dan B. Yeah, so Dan sent me a card. And I know there's one sticker in it, but I don't know what else is in here. So he sent me a card. It's got some dogs on it. Look at that. Look at them dogs. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is Baby Yoda with a beard. No, stop it. Look at it. Stop baby Yoda, it. Baby, baby Yoda. Can you see it? Does it look better if I do this? Yeah. I know, I know how much you like it when I put it real close to the camera. So, <laughs> yeah, Baby Yoda with a beard. And then there's another one. Shipyard. Sure. Monkey Fist IPA. Oh, this oval sticker. With a, this is like a fun unboxing. Look at this. A monkey. A fist. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like it. I'm going to stick it on something. But look at that. Did you notice there's a baby out of the beard? That's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this next one, I'm going to mess your name up. But uh, Ryan, what? I want to open this one last. Yeah. I want to open this one last. 
So the next one comes from our very dear and uh, loving friend, Beard Laws, Mr. Matt McClear. Uh, so this is going to be something that he's been working on for some time. It's a breaking news of the world type thing. And uh, it's going to get his world debut right here. I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to open it, but whatever. It's, I'm opening it. It's day butt. Day butt. So look at this. I'm looking. I'm looking. So there you go. Andrea Glander wants our uh, addresses. So we will send those to you, ma'am. So this is uh, the mustache mate. Oh, he sent me some stickers too. Look at this mustache mate. So this is an invention by Mr. Matt McClear. So not only is he an uh, a uh, author, he is also an inventor now. So with that being said, no. <sighs> Have you ever tried to go eat? And then, like, your mustache gets in the way. Nope. And then you got to, like, push your mustache out of the way and then um, 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 eat food. Not anymore. Oh, no. So, he invented this thing. Look at this. Pow. The mustache, mate. It's got a little lip on it. And you're just like, wow. Look at that. I don't have a mustache anymore. So, I could eat bagels now or ice cream cones. Oh, yep. And it clicks into place if you click it all the way into place. It'd be really great if you were right-handed. Oh, but wait. The handle? Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Matt thinks of everything. Oh, my gosh. Uh, if you... Oh, wait. Wait a minute. I'm really selling this thing. There we go. Look at this. I have a mustache, and I can still eat. And my mustache will not get in the way. And it's great because you can hold your mustache out of the way and it still looks like you have a yeah, mustache. You can't even tell I have it because, you know, it's still a mustache and it comes in lots of fun colors. Look at this, a yellow one, an orange one and a black one. So, yeah, he sent me this and look, look at this. I'm not I'm not even done. Look at that. You can even hold it up to the top. So it's got lots of little little things. It's super fun. It's cool. It's also- thing. I think it also has a dual purpose of it's supposed to make guys with whalers actually look like more appealing. Exactly. Well. So that's, you know, for the, for the core guys in the group is like, Oh, check it out. Look, I have a mustache. I don't look dumb at all. And, uh, so yeah, you've got that. Uh, sent me some stickers. What else? He sent me his business card. You guys are awesome. And I can't thank you enough for all you do for me and the bearded community. Love you guys, Matt McClear. Look at that. So, wow. um, Matt McClear is going to make his triumphant return next week. Uh, he's going to bring back his new segment, and he's going to talk about his uh, his invention here. So that'll be pretty fun for next week. We're going to find knows- out how many thousands upon thousands he sold in the first week after yeah, the debut I'm- on Talking Beards. <laughs> I've already pimped it out here, so I'm sure there's going to be a million of them sold, but we'll go more in depth next week. But wait a minute. Where do you get them at? Uh, m- Mustache mate. I don't know. Go to Beard Laws and find it. Beardlaws.com. Yeah, there you go. Go to Beardlaws.com. They're probably on there. Go to www.mustachemate.com. Mustache with a U. So M-U-S-T-A-C-H mate.com. So mustache mate.com. So this one comes from us from ryan centaur uh he is in colleen texas and i have no idea what's in here at all the last two i at least had an idea well he's here with us right now what's up ryan yeah so here we go so this this came he told natalie don't let him open this until beard mail and this is beard mail so it's getting open for the first time besides cutting open the box oh my gosh this is, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. So Ryan made this. It uh it was packaged by uh Carum Lasers. So I assume this is like a laser engraving place because this seems laser engravy. Oh my gosh. Look at this. That's me and my mom. That is awesome. How cool is that? Thank you, Ryan. Awesome. There's another one in here. I don't know. Let's see. (laughs) It's Natalie. She looks silly in that picture. Just look at her. 
So that's apparently cool, Ryan's business is to do this laser engraving on wood. Yeah, man. That's so uh, anybody hit up Ryan if you want some laser engraving because these are pretty badass. Ryan, stick your uh, if you have a website, give us a uh, put it in the uh, chat room so people can see what it is. Thank you, Ryan. I, I appreciate that, man. That, that's super cool, dude. So, yeah, anybody want. I mean, you can make some good trophies. So, you know, thinking about, you know, you, Martin Pippen. Yeah, there you go. So super cool trophies, presents, whatever. This is uh, help out someone in the beer community. And it, w- it was a really nice thing. So hit them up. We will uh, I'll post some a website or something on our, you know, Facebook page and all that. We'll we'll share it around. So we'll, we'll make sure that this gets out and about. So there you go. Kyram lasers. Wow. See, That's even awesome. Andrea is already ready. She already wants to get something made. There you go, man. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody should order something from you because that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, so, it's definitely. Ow. I mean, it's real. It could be a really fun, nice custom gift that you could give your mom or, uh, or, you know, for mother's day or for father's day. And this is the other Grogu. Look at this. Hi. He doesn't have a beard. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's it uh we did it we had a very successful episode we got through everything so we were very successful so everybody thank you for tuning in tonight uh make sure you hit up all the live beer competitions that you can there's three this weekend uh let's get the the community rolling again you know covid's starting to taper off so let's let's get out there and and make some difference in the beer community go hug each other if you can and all that good stuff and let's let's go do beard stuff again i'm i'm excited about it so yeah everybody thank you for sending me beard mail send in scott beard mail uh we will send you know andrea the uh addresses of aaron d johnston and scott c sakura and maybe we'll have some more you know, beard mail coming up for both of us. So everybody send us stuff. We, we like getting stuff. So yes. send us stuff and uh, yeah, we'll open it up. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Andrew for making our pictures as per usual. Uh, Martin Pippen from uh, gather up events. Everybody go check that out. And this is it. I did it. Uh, I don't know. I don't have anything else to say. So go ahead, Scott. Uh, and I am Scott Sakura. You can find us over at talkingbeards.com, which we want you guys to go over there, check that website out. Um, if you're interested in picking up a really cool Talking Beards t shirt, sweatshirt, we have all sorts of different cool stuff over there. Uh, you can get a link to our Teespring page. Uh, go pick something up. You can subscribe to the podcast, which we highly, highly recommend that you do. Do it. Um, we're getting close to 200 episodes of Talking Beards with the Beardcaster. So go subscribe to that. Uh, share it with your friends, please. You know, share Talking Beards. We're all about promoting the beard community and all the great things that uh, all the clubs are doing all the organizations are doing to uh, help those that are less fortunate or in need uh, extra help. So other than that, just uh, we want you guys all to have a great week until we talk to you next week, next Tuesday, live 8 PM. You can watch live over at talkingbeards.com, or you can watch us live on Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitch, no more Periscope. No, Periscope's gone. So, yeah, uh, everybody go check out our YouTube channel. We've got all the shows in their own little folders now. And, and you know, everybody go like and subscribe over there because, you know, that's where the network lives now is on our YouTube channel. And so far, so good. Uh, there's been a lot more traffic over there than there has been three weeks ago. So I think, I don't know, I think this little experiment's working. So, everybody, thank you for tuning in. And as per usual, Share this episode and you will win an honest Amish product. Basically, if you're choosing, I'll, I'll hit you up and uh, whoever shares it the most and we'll get your address and whatever you want. I'll send it to you. So yeah. if you're not done with beard stuff and you want something a little bit new and exciting, go check out TikTok Tuesday with Matt McClear. It is on now. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. See you later. Oh, so on. long. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Talking Beards podcast. 
You can find out more information by going to talkingbeards.com. There you can subscribe to the podcast, make a donation to our show, or pick up some really cool Talking Beards merchandise. We hope to see you in the chat room. You can find us over at facebook.com slash Talking Beards if you want to participate in our chat. Thank you again for checking the show out, and we hope you have a great week. Make sure you come back next week at 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening to watch the show live. Until next time, thanks. Thanks.